I'm here with Captain Ron Key at the Salvation Army, and uh, Captain, if you want to say hi to people out there. Hello, everybody <laughs> in Branson and surrounding areas. I um, I had come down here a few months ago during the disasters and noticed that this was kind of the central operations for everything and, and the support effort. Can you tell us a little bit about how that, from the first days and, and how everybody reacted to it? Uh, well, the first few days, the chamber had approached the Salvation Army about spearheading the relief effort for the Hurricane Katrina evacuees. Actually, we were planning for about 50 to 70 families, which is what we thought would come this way. Um, through both hurricanes, over 800 families came this direction. Um, the chamber was very helpful, as well as the business people, entertainers, um, people who own condos, all those, all those people were helpful in donating of their free entertainment or just um, getting information out or uh, free meals, whatever it may have been. Actually, everyone who came here um, got everything they needed. Um, they estimate that the city gave over a million dollars away to help those in need um, through hotel rooms, condos, food, clothing, entertainment, whatever it may be. Uh, actually, and also 35 families have actually relocated to the Branson area that we help with relocation as far as finding a place to live, helping with the utilities, furniture, things like that. So. Awesome. Um, what was the darkest hour here for the Salvation Army? I think the darkest hour was just right at the beginning, not knowing what the extent of the needs were going to be. We were overwhelmed those first few days because we were planning, you know, 50 to 70 families, and within three days we had over 200 families. And just getting that information out that we need, what we needed, you know, is food and and water, just the basic necessities of life that we could help people with. Um, getting information out to the hotels to see if they would help with some a block of rooms or the restaurants or entertainers, whatever that may be, and um, volunteers. Um, we only have three people on our staff here, so we had probably 20, 25 volunteers uh, that came in, um, spur you know, sporadically throughout the time. We had one lady who basically organized the volunteers. She did a calendar. She scheduled them for a certain day, certain time. We knew who was going to be here. We were going to do what. Um, you know, there were certain rooms that we were distributing things out of. She would assign people to those rooms, which took a lot of the administrative headaches off of me. I knew if I went to a room, there would be people there to help people. Um, we had people answering phones, uh, people taking donations, people greeting people at the door, um, just, you know, little things like that. Mm -hmm. What what was the main thing that you learned, and what can we do to prepare ourselves next time? Um, the main thing that we learned is probably just from the very beginning, there were a few things that we uh, forgot at the beginning that we should have been doing, such as, you know, the health department. We were supposed to tell them where everybody was at. We didn't have any records of that at first, the first couple of weeks. I just remembered some hotels we put people in. So those things like that would be different this time, um, mainly because we were seeing a lot of people with staff infections. They want to make sure that didn't become an epidemic. Um, um, but most of everything else, we have a big resource book now that we have everybody contact the volunteers, organizations that were helping, individuals that were helping. So we have that. So we're hoping, you know, hoping it doesn't happen again. But if it does, Branson will be more prepared and ready this time to help others. I know um, I was sitting here today by Round the Clock Realty, and I know that we're, they had donated a website, and I was wondering what else you think we can do in the online community to assist you with your efforts. Um, just, I guess, just to get the information out about what we're doing, um, how we're helping people, what our needs are, uh, whether it's monetary donations or whether it's just physical food and baby diapers and formula and clothing, you know, those type of things. Um, a lot of times monetary donations, not that we refused anything, monetary donations sometimes are more helpful because we can purchase what we need. There were some things that we needed that people, we never thought we would need. Things like underwear and socks. People would bring clothes, but no underwear and socks. We had to go buy things like that. Um, you know, things for children, um, little things. Uh, each child, we tried to provide each child because they'd lost just about everything. Each child, we gave them a toy, so they would have a toy. It could be a coloring book, crayons, and a toy that they walked out of here with that would help them. Uh, they were misplaced, probably more affected them than many of the parents that we saw. Um, as adults, we can cope sometimes. Children, you know, when they lose their friends, when they lose their animals, when they lose their family members, 
um, it's difficult for them. So we try to help the children with just those things that people don't think about sometimes. Um, and some of those things we had to purchase. I, I think when a lot of people go through a tragedy, an act of God, and at one time a lot of people reach out to help. But what about the normal effort of the salvation, the everyday efforts? What kinds of things do you guys do here? Uh, everyday efforts, we have an emergency food pantry. Uh, we have also help people with.